So if you're actually pretty good in algebra, well, you should be able to solve this equation without using a calculator. Let's take a look at the problem. We have 1 over 12 to the 2x is equal to 12. What is x equal to? If you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I'm going to walk through the complete solution steps in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, come on over to my site, tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so one more time, we're trying to solve this equation. 1 over 12 to the 2x is equal to 12. What is x equal to? Well, let's take a look at the complete solution right now. Okay, so here is our problem. And again, uh, we are looking to solve for the variable in the exponent spot. But something uh, that comes to mind here, or hopefully all of you are kind of seeing, is that we have 12, right? So both, uh, both sides of the equation have this 12 in common, right? So that might be a good clue in terms of maybe uh, solving this problem. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it right now. So let's suppose, here is our actual problem, but let's just make up an easier problem here just for a quick second. So what if I had 12 to the x is equal to 12 to the third power? Now this is an exponential equation right here, right? Because the variable is in the exponent spot. Now, we don't need to take the logarithm of both sides. For those of you that understand how to solve equations using logarithms, you would go log, uh, log of 12x is equal to log of 12 to the third power, and then you would just kind of go from there. And if you don't understand this, well, no big deal, because uh, again, we're going to be using basic algebra to solve this problem. But let's just kind of look at this from a common sense standpoint, okay? So 12 to the third power, okay, whatever the value this is, and if this is equal to 12 to the x power, well, what must x be equal to, okay? If we're saying that uh, these things here are the same, and that's what this uh, symbol means in mathematics, right? We're basically, uh, this is an equation. We're saying that the left-hand side is equal uh, to the right-hand side. It's almost like, uh, think of this as a scale, right? They weigh the same amount. So if that's the case, and uh, they both have the same base, 12, again, when we're talking about powers, we have two parts. We have the exponent and the base. The entire thing is a power. Well, uh, hopefully, all of you say uh, might be saying to yourself, hey, Mr. E2 Math Man, that x must be equal to 3, okay, in order for this to be a true statement. And that would be correct, right? So the only thing that makes this statement true is 12 to the 3rd is equal to 12 to the 3rd. No other statement like 12 to the 5th or 12 squared would make this true. And again, that is a review of what the solution is, okay? The solution to an equation is the value such that when you plug it in, and replace that variable, it makes that statement true. And in this case, it's x is equal to 3. But this was very easy because the bases were the same. Okay, now if I change the base here, well, then we got a different situation. If I had 7x is equal to 12 uh, to the third power, well, then we have to use some fancy math in order to solve this problem. All right, but uh, again, here, 12 to the x is equal to 12 to the third, super easy to solve. And over here, we both have like a 12 involved. Now, the one thing that you need to know about a number, like let's just say 12 by itself, you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I don't see a power here. It's just 12 by itself. No, no, that's not the case. Uh, any number, when you don't see an exponent, really has a one as its exponent, all right? So 12 to the first power is uh, 12. All right, so this is a good clue here on the strategy that we want to take, right? So we kind of want to see if we could take this equation and maybe uh, write it in such a way where we can have uh, two 12s as the basis and then just simply equate the exponents. And we can, but we have to understand this simple algebra formula or rule right here. Matter of fact, this is what we call a property. And some of you might be saying, MST2 Math Man, this doesn't look too complex. It looks a little fancy uh, to me. It looks a little difficult. Well, actually, uh, this is a property of powers and exponents. 
And uh, when you first start learning about powers and exponents, in other words, like two to the third times two to the fifth, when you're working with um, powers and exponents, okay, you got to know the properties. And there's like a handful of them. There's like five of them. You have to know when you can multiply powers, when you can divide powers, when you can take a power to a power, and some other things as well. Hopefully you're familiar with this, but this is the one that we need uh, for this situation. So it's a to the negative n is equal to 1 over a to the n. This is a negative exponent property, and this particular property or rule is highly confused uh, amongst uh, algebra students. But I'm going to explain it to you in a simple way because we're going to need this in order to make this problem uh, nice and easy. Okay, so here is the property or formula or rule a to the negative n is equal to 1 over a to the n. So what is this saying? Well, we have a power where a is the uh, base, and it's to a negative exponent. a to the negative n is equal to 1 over a to the n. So let's just follow the pattern in this simple example right here. So x to the negative 2 is equal to what? Well, the rule says anytime you have a power and you have a negative exponent, like right here, x to the negative 2, it says this is equal to 1, okay, so we'll put that 1 right here, over a to the n. It's the same power, but this negative becomes a positive. So that's what we have right here. So x to the negative 2 is equal to 1 over x uh, squared. Okay, so this is a simple illustration of this rule. And let's take a look at uh, a few more examples here. And if you understand this, well, then you're going to understand how to solve this equation without the use of logarithms. Okay, so let's take a look again at another example. Now, before we continue on, if you want to get better at math, you definitely can. But the key is to find a teacher that gives you clear and understandable instruction. So hopefully you like my teaching style, and if you do, if you're like, yes, I think I can learn from you, well, then you will love my full main math courses. So uh, you can find the links to all of these courses in the description, but they include basic math, pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, pre-calculus, and a ton of specialized test prep math courses. Okay, so again, don't give up if you're having a tough time in math. I can definitely help you out. So you can check out the links to all these courses in the description. So let's get back to the video. So here is our property, our formula for negative exponents. So a to the negative n is equal to 1 over a to the positive n. So this works with numbers as well. So 3 to the negative 2 power is equal to 1 over 3 squared. Okay, so basically you're just simply following the pattern. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this situation now, okay? Now here, uh, we do have a negative exponent, but it's down in the denominator. So let's see if you can figure this out. Matter of fact, if you want to kind of test your uh, math skills, your fraction skills, let's see if you can um, use this property, okay? What you're, what you're going to do here is use this property on the denominator, okay? So go ahead and write the denominator uh, using this property. And now we have 1 divided by what this is going to be equal to. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look what this looks like. So this is going to be a little bit different than the other previous examples. So 1 over x to the negative 2 is equal to 1 over. Now here, this is like a little problem within itself. So x to the negative 2, remember, is 1 over x squared. All right, so again, we're going from negative to positive, but we've got to put this thing over 1. Now here... This is a complex fraction. This is 1. This fraction bar is the division operator. Uh, so we're going to take that 1 divided by this stuff right here. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So 1 over x to the negative 2 power is equal to 1 over 1 to the x to the positive 2 power, x squared. And that is equal to 1, okay, divided by... 1 over x squared. Now, how do we multiply? How do we divide fractions? Well, we're going to flip the fraction to the right of the division uh, symbol. So this becomes multiplication, and we're going to flip this guy upside down. So 1 over x squared becomes x squared over 1, or just x squared. So now we have 1 times x squared, which, of course, is x squared. So we did all this fancy work basically to understand the following, okay? That 1 over x to the negative 2 power is equal to x squared. So I'm going to teach you a super easy way to understand 
this property of uh, negative exponents. This is a critical property. Again, it's highly confused uh, amongst algebra students, but let's go ahead and take a look at an easy way to understand this property. Okay, so here we go. Anytime you want to uh, change the sign of a power, okay, so for example, right here I have x to the negative 3. If I want to change the sign to x to the, a positive 3 power, I can. All I have to do is move it to the opposite side of the fraction bar, okay? So if you pick up a power, and we're talking about a fraction here, and we move it to the opposite side of the fraction bar, the sign of the exponent changes. So this is going to become x to the positive 3 power. All right, so how about this one right here? If I wanted to change the sign of y to the fourth, this is in, in the denominator. We'll just put it up in the numerator. And when I do that, it's going to be y to the negative fourth power. So anytime I want to go from a negative to a positive or positive to a negative in terms of an exponent, I simply can. And this expression right here is equivalent to this expression right here. It's really up to uh, me in terms, or you, uh, in terms of how you want to write this. So now let's kind of go back over here and take a look at this problem. So 1 over x to the negative 2. Well, what we want to do is move this x to the negative 2 up to the numerator, and it becomes positive. Okay, so that's x to a positive 2, x squared over 1. All right, so if you understand this, then you have everything you need to know in order to solve this equation that we are talking about. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started on it. So here is our problem. And we kind of want to make it make it like this, right? So back to this simple problem. If we can get the bases the same, okay, if we can uh, have a 12 over here and a 12 over here, then we can just equate the exponents. So now, what do you think we can do in order to get the bases the same? We have 1 over 12 to the 2x is equal to 12. Well, we can easily get the bases the same by moving this thing upstairs, all right? Upstairs, i.e. the numerator, and we can use this property of negative exponents. Okay, so all I can, all I need to do is put this up in the numerator. Okay, when I do that, the sign's going to go from 2x to negative 2x, and that is going to be over 1. Okay, so if you understand that, well, then you can see here we are ready to do some simple algebra to solve this problem. All right, so now really not much to do here. So we have 12 to the negative 2x is equal to 12. But remember, you might be saying, hey, where's the exponent over here, Mr. YouTube Math Man? Well, just put a 1 up there. Okay, so we have 12 to the negative 2x is equal to 12 to the first power. So now we can equate the exponents. So negative 2x must be equal to 1 in order for this statement to be true. So let's go ahead and just uh, set uh, negative 2x equal to 1 in a simple algebraic equation. So we have negative 2x is equal to 1. So to solve for x, all I have to do is divide both sides of the equation by negative 2. So x is equal to negative 1 half. So I hope this video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, if you need additional help in advanced math, check out these courses right here. So these courses, Algebra 2 and College Algebra, these are effectively the same level of mathematics. So whether you take my Algebra 2 or College Algebra uh, course, you're going to get the same material. Now, if you are further along in math and you need to study like advanced trigonometry and other topics, then check out my pre-calculus course. All right, so I'm going to leave uh, links to all these courses in the description of this video. And with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.